Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I am sharing the March 2021 Simon Says Stamp Card Kit Spring Windows, and I've got a ton of inspiration using it. As of recording this video, the kit was still in stock, but even if it sells out, most of the items that are included inside can be purchased individually. So let's first just flip through real fast the contents of the kit. Here's the Spring Windows Inspiration Sheet. In the kit, you'll find an 8.5 by 11 sheet of watercolor paper, light blue cardstock, craft cardstock, a blue and silver envelope, an 8.5 by 11 piece of Simon Says Stamp Vellum, an A2 piece of acetate, Tim Holtz Ideology Quote Flare, a sheet of Tim Holtz Label Stickers, pattern paper from Cartabella's Paper Flower Garden Pad, Simon Says Stamp Beautiful Die Set, Simon Says Stamp 6x8 Spring Window Stamp Set with two window styles and many different sentiments, and last but not least, Tim Holtz Distress Markers, three of them, and the lollipop goes to my daughter. Now that you've seen what we're working with, I am going to share seven different cards using this kit. And we're gonna start with what I felt was the most complicated card, and then we're gonna go into some easier ones as we go through the video. For the first card, I'm going to do a no-line watercolor using Gina K Amalgam Ink in Whisper. I'm using this light gray ink to ink up the rectangular window. The first pass on the watercolor paper was very light, so I stamped it again. I know it's hard to see in camera, but with the double stamping, I in person could see all the details of the stamp. I'm starting to work on the window panes by adding a bit of color in the bottom left hand corner of the panel with the marker. I dipped a small brush in water and moved the color around with the brush. I had not cleaned this brush, so there was a little bit of yellow still on it, so this panel didn't come out great. When I needed to add additional color, I wrote on the palette paper underneath and spritzed it with water. For the window sills, I put marker down on the left and right hand sides and then used the wet brush to move the color towards the center and blend it out. For the shutters, I put marker on the top and bottom of each panel and then used the brush to blend it out. I worked on a panel on the right hand shutter. While that was drying, I worked on a panel on the left hand side to avoid everything pooling together. On both sides, I avoided the hinges. I tried to fix up the window pane that had a bit of yellow on it. I used the pink marker for the hinges. Again, a bit of marker on each side and then a wet brush to blend it out. I filled in the flowers and leaves in the flower box and used a bit of blue to add shading to the green leaves. I used the pink around the window panes and the bottom pane was not dry, so some of the pink leaked into the window pane. I used a bit of water to try and pick up the pink and then added some additional blue to cover up the mistake. Next time, I would really wait for everything to dry before moving on as I did with the shutters, which I think is the best job I did with the no-line coloring image. I matted it on craft cardstock and some pattern paper and then heat embossed the sentiment at the top with white embossing powder right over the pattern paper. For the next card, I'm using the watercolor paper again. You'll notice there's a textured side and a smooth side of this paper. Since I'm stamping a detailed stamp, I'm going to use the smooth side of the paper. I treated the paper with anti-static powder and swept away the excess, and I'm using VersaFine Black Onyx Pigment Ink to stamp the arched window stamp. I poured fine detail clear embossing powder on top and used the heat tool to melt the embossing powder so that the image is black and shiny and will resist watercolor. I cut down a piece of waffle flower palette paper to the size of the mini media mat so that I could scribble some of the pink distress marker on top. With the palette paper protecting the mat, I'm able to scribble the distress marker down on the palette paper, then spritz it with water and pick it up with a large flat brush to swipe all across the heat embossed card panel. The shiny black image will resist that watercolor. 
This is a quick and easy way to watercolor the background that doesn't take the time of no line coloring. You also don't have to wait for the watercolor to dry before starting in on the next, since the blending between colors here can be very pretty. Once the panel background was dry, I decided to use the fine point end of the markers to color in the image. I'm just going to use the same three markers and I'm coloring the image in sections to match the background. So pink, where the background is pink, blue where the background is blue, etc. Once the panel was dry, I matted it on a piece of blue cardstock from the kit and then on craft from the kit as well and put that in my Misty to stamp the sentiment. This was a fun way to use both ends of the markers on one card. For the next card, I'm going to use Versamark to ink up the large rectangular window and then stamp it on a piece of vellum from the kit. I just wanted to add here that Simon Says Stamp Vellum is my preferred vellum. It's thick enough to heat emboss and just a very good quality of vellum, so I usually buy this in two packs at a time. Here you can see how easily I melted the embossing powder without scorching the vellum. I fussy cut the image out and then matted some craft cardstock on an A2 piece of pattern paper. I used a bit of tape runner behind the vellum. If you stick to the areas that have the most details of the image, you can easily hide the tape runner. I placed this whole panel in my mini Misty and added a circle sentiment stamp and one of the perfectly curved sentiments on top of that. I love that these sentiments are made curved to fit around the circles. I treated the panel with anti-static powder and inked up both stamps with Versamark ink and poured a bunch of detail white embossing powder on top. I love the way white embossing powder looks on craft cardstock. I grabbed that Whisper Amalgam ink to stamp some of the bricks around the window. I really like using this little acrylic block from Simon Says Stamp for small stamps like this when I'm not as worried about getting the perfect impression. I used the Distress Markers to color in the flowers on the vellum. This was a super easy card, but I love the look of the vellum, white, and then small pops of color. For the next card, I'm going to use two pieces of pattern paper. I like finding two patterns that work well together and then use a two thirds, one third combination. This time I'm going to use the arch window and I'm going to stamp and heat emboss with VersaFine black onyx ink and clear embossing powder. This shiny black embossed image looks great on vellum just like the white embossing powder did and the black will help the image stand out on the pattern paper background. I'm going to use one of the label stickers right on the window, which will give me a good spot to hide adhesive behind it. Once everything was adhered down, I decided I wanted a small separation between the two patterns. So I used a small scrap of blue pattern paper. Again, this is a very simple card to create, but the pattern paper and stamped images make it a pretty overall design that you could do several times over with different patterns and label sentiment stickers. The next card is going to be based on one of the circle sentiment stamps. So I'm going to start by stamping it with VersaFine Black Onyx ink on a scrap of pattern paper from the kit. One of the reasons I like to use these small plastic containers to hold embossing powders is that you can dip the stamped image right into the powder and there's no cleanup. I found a circle die just a bit larger than the stamped circle and temporarily adhered the die with purple tape to run it through my die cut machine. This is why I like having an assortment of basic shape dies and in fact, I have an entire video sharing five ways to use basic shape dies and I'll link to it in the upper right hand corner here. I've used the same die to cut out some other circles of pattern paper and I'm arranging them on a four by five and a quarter piece of craft cardstock so I can get an idea of where I want to stamp the arc sentiment.
Then I remove all the pieces and ink up the sentiment with the same VersaFine ink I used for the circle and heat emboss it with clear embossing powder to make it stand out and shine. I added some tape runner to an A2 piece of the blue cardstock and adhered the craft on top. I was waiting for the sentiment to dry, that's why I did it that way. I placed a piece of foam tape behind the Love You Circle and popped it up right under the stamped arc sentiment. Next, I placed the other four die-cut circles of pattern paper in the corners popped up on foam adhesive too. For the flare, I placed several layers of foam tape inside the flare until I was able to use that to adhere it to the card front and added a couple of enamel dots to balance out that center. For the next card, I'm going to use one of the small cut apart pieces of pattern paper. I love the little black and white canopy on the cart, so I'm going to use a black and white piece of pattern paper. You can see the pattern paper has some blue stuck to it. That's because I had been previously using it as a background for one of the earlier cards, but decided I didn't like it there. So I carefully peeled it off and saved it because I knew I would find another use for it. And I decided this was it. So I'm adhering a solid piece of the pattern paper down to the black and white stripe. And now I'm going to create kind of a color blocked image. So I cut a piece of pattern paper as tall as the little cut out card, but slimmer. I placed one of the labels down lined up with the pattern paper on the left. And now I adhere the two middle pieces down. To balance this, I placed another label down on the bottom, but on the right hand side, this time to create sort of a symmetrical design, but one that still has contrast because the labels and the two pattern paper pieces are different widths. To fill in the open spaces next to the labels, I cut a strip of this floral pattern paper with black background to the same height as the labels, but lengths that would complete that area. I used to love using color blocking in scrapbooking, so this was fun to do and so easy as there was no stamping or die cutting involved. After all these cards, I was about to put everything away and as I was cleaning up, I found the beautiful die. I knew I had to use it on at least one card before I put the rest of the kit contents away, so I die cut the shadow layer out of a solid piece from the pattern paper pad and layered some pattern paper on blue cardstock from the kit. Since the letters are very thin and scripty, I added some iCraft Easy Cut Adhesive to the back of white cardstock and die cut the top layer twice from that adhesive backed cardstock. I placed the first layer down on the shadow, working one letter at a time to straighten the die cut. Then I placed the second layer on top. I only placed one dot down and straightened it with my scissors. I have a new tool coming from Tonic Studio soon that will be a great help for things like that. I used up some more of the adhesive backed cardstock to mat the Bloom and Grow card I cut out of the pattern paper and then decided that was getting lost on all the light colors. So I matted it on craft cardstock before adhering it to my last easy card. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this kit and seeing all the cards I made with it. If you want to see why I like subscribing to Simon Says Stamps Kit Club, I'm going to link to that video over here. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you can be notified every time I have a new video available. As always, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon.